Hello interwebs, I hope you're doing well. For today's video, I kind of want to lean into my film buff side, which I don't really talk about all that much. Mostly this channel, I talk about all the nerdy stuff I love. But this, uh, for this video, I'm going to actually lean more into my film buff and my love of sort of underrated, underappreciated, and underseen films because I want to recommend you a film called Riders of Justice, starring one of my favorite actors of all time, Mads Mikkelsen. Now, to be fair, I would watch a movie called Mad Mikkelsen Describes Wallpaper, and I would probably give it five out of five stars just because I adore him as an actor so, so much. I think he is great in everything he does, even when he's in, like, nothing villain roles in the MCU, like in Doctor Strange. I think he's still great. Uh, he brings as much as he can, even with limited stuff. Uh, so I just absolutely adore him. So I ended up, uh, because of that, I, you know, saw that this movie was getting a little bit of buzz on some film websites and saying, that, hey, this is a really great film, maybe one of the best of the year, sort of one to consider. And I said, okay. I'll give it a shot based off of the description of the film. And the description of the film, just to give you sort of a heads up, is it's an action comedy starring Mads Mikkelsen where basically he is he comes home after the death of his wife. He works in the army. Um, and he comes home to take care of his daughter, who he's sort of estranged from, and ends up uh, learning from this scientist guy who does a lot of, like, he, do, he basically sort of does probability algorithms. He was on the train where uh, the, his wife w died, and he basically tells Mads Mikkelsen, hey, I don't think your wife your wife's death, death was an accident um, and so Mads Mikkelsen starts to av try to avenge his wife and kill the people that um, presumably murdered his wife on the train as as um, as going through the story and sort of getting revenge. Um, so hearing that, it sounds a bit like a sort of Danish Taken kind of film like the Liam Neeson film Taken uh, starring Mads Mikkelsen and you know hearing action comedy it's like I feel like it would be just kind of a good time and I, I didn't really expect it to be anything more than that um, but ultimately I was shocked, truly shocked, by how moving, um, like emotionally stirring, how thematically resonant this uh, film was. Um, how it, 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 there were so many moments throughout it that surprised me and shocked me um, and hit me right in the stomach. But also, this film managed to connect these ideas to not just uh, things of like death and grief and how we make sense from trauma and how we try to make sense of the uh, make uh, the unsensible um, but also connects that to even larger ideas and themes through things like probability how algorithms predict our lives based on just sort of like assuming different things taking in a lot of data and sort of trying to assume things out based on that data um, and, and sort of like connecting all these different themes and and I thought it was so smart and so beautiful that I just had to talk about it for a couple minutes like I said this movie is very much about the idea of of how do we process trauma and how do we try to find meaning from trauma? So when Mad Mads Mikkelsen comes home to find his daughter after his wife's death, um, he doesn't know his daughter and he sees his daughter sort of spiraling out into trying to find meaning uh, for the, her mother's death. She just turns to God. She turns to try and predicting, like, like trying to see whose fault it was by putting sticky notes on the wall. Um, and, and she's just trying to figure this out and trying to figure out why her mother would have died in this seemingly random accident. And Mads Mikkelsen is very much a closed off, unemotional guy. He's like, I don't like to show any emotions. Very much that toxic masculinity sort of thing where he, he buries it all down, doesn't talk about it, doesn't like to cry, doesn't like to express emotions with his daughter, very, like, pushes himself away from her and then also reacts violently um, quite often um, when he is uh, when he's feeling emotion but doesn't know how to express it and doesn't know how to express it in a really uh, healthy way. So when given the chance by this guy who uh, kind of blames himself for uh, Mads Mikkelsen's wife's death, the probability guy, um, his name is Otto, uh, he sort of takes that chance to like, okay, I'm going to go and murder these people and that's how I'm going to find my meaning after my wife's death. So it's sort of connecting all those things in there. But it also connects with Otto as well. Like I said, Otto is this guy who he does algorithm work. He tries to predict events. So he sort of looks at this and says, oh, um, you know, I feel responsible for this woman's death. And he starts seeing like, oh, the probability of these certain things happening would mean that she had to have been murdered. And, and it's sort of connecting these ideas of how do you find meaning of in death and trauma and connecting it to like algorithms and things like that and also stuff to God like with the daughter and we start to see what's really beautiful about this is that when Otto comes into this and sort of gets involved with Mads Mikkelsen he starts to bring in his other friends his other computer friends into this story and into Mads Mikkelsen's world and so what's really beautiful about this and I don't want to spoil too much because I just want you to enjoy this the, sh the movie but it starts to build this sort of family feel and it's get a lot of the comedy comes out of the interaction between uh, Mads Mikkelsen and these other three characters as well as his daughter um, 
and sort of like the, the found family that they start to find. And that sort of, again, ties into this fe feeling of how do we find meaning after trauma and sort of the different ways we do it through violence, through God, through algorithms, through science, or through family um, and through found family and building our own new family, moving forward in different ways. And the, the film does all of that while being very funny. And yet, it still within the comedy manages to find deeply brilliant and resonant moments of humanity and depthful humanity as well. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen, like I said, is a fantastic actor, and he is by no means uh, a slouch in this film. Uh, there are some moments in this movie where he manages to really portray a guy who does not know how to express himself, does not know how to show emotions, and yet like all of us, still feels emotions. Like someone who is so pent up and you just see the brewing rage and anger, resentment, hatred, and, and pain um, and sadness that this character feels. And Mads just does a great job of showing you a man who tries to bottle it all down but definitely feels it and lets it out in the most harmful ways. Um, all that also, oh, too, I should mention, this is an action comedy uh, to a degree. Uh, the action in this is surprising and gritty and real. It, it, it's not like stylized John Wickian action, though there is some cool fight sequences. It is very much more of the raw feel, which I think fits the raw feeling of the tone and, and emotion that this film is going for. Um, and so if you're here for action, uh, it's definitely, uh, it takes its time to get to the moments of action. It's not like immediately action-y off the top. Um, but there are those moments and it does get there and they are, I don't want to say they're not like the most brutal things I've seen, but they're up there. Um, and I, I thought that that was very cool to see. Um, so ultimately at the end of the day, if you're looking for like a movie with some good action, but a lot of heart, uh, I cannot recommend this movie enough. Truly some fantastic stuff. Also, the actor who plays Otto and the daughter as well both do fantastic work throughout this film as well. Um, there's one particular scene with the character of Otto who I really adored. Um, one note I should say too before I finish off, just knowing my audience, there is a character in this who is clearly meant to... Um, be uh, neurodivergent in some senses. I read him as on the autism spectrum, but you could you can interpret him different ways. I think it's never made entirely clear. And I particularly li I liked how he was handled. Um, I don't think it's like you know. I, I found it to be particularly nuanced in how they displayed him. He was like able to like quickly realize stuff. He was expressing emotions in sort of strange and quote unquote strange to uh, atypical pe neuro atyp or neurotypical people, I should say. Um, and I, I particularly liked that the film never shamed him um, in any way. The, the only thing I would say is there's sometimes some laughs um, coming from who he is that can be read as belittling him for being, um, neuroatypical or neurodivergent, I should say. Um, but I don't, I didn't find them all that more egregious than laughing at any of the other characters for other stuff. Um, and I ultimately think that the film was very sympathetic towards him, but that's just something to be aware of, uh, gauge, uh, for yourself, how you felt the representation of this character was for you. But for me, by my money, as someone who is autistic, um, I think it worked. I think it, it worked for me. Um, so overall, I think this was a really beautiful film that I cannot recommend enough and will possibly be in the running for one of my top favorite films of the year so far. Um, so I would I would definitely give it a look. But until then, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out my other main channel, Jesse Gender, where I do more video essay stuff. I also have a Patreon page that you can help support me at. But beyond all of that, I just say thank you and hope that you, as always, live long and stay sexy.